Welcome to Moho World. <laughs> and uh, it all started with a change of a mobile phone, would you believe? So I've just changed my mobile phone from an iPhone 13 to a 15. So a little bit of a dilemma with then all of a sudden it kicks in, doesn't it? Ah, now then, the charging lead from the 13 to the 15. Different size. So then it's kind of like, when you've got a motor home, you've got all your charging leads in your motor home, you've got them in your house, you've got them in your car. Um, so it is like all them leads uh, that I've got in my motor home, basically redundant they don't they don't fit my new phone so literally that's the end of that um so in the meantime i'm like okay right so uh, so charging leads um so <laughs> my first my first plan of attack which is not a bad plan of attack really um is the fact that you can get these little tiny um adapters like that styly so you can go from your conventional usb to the usb c styly um that now is conventional on both ends of your charging lead for an iphone that will just plug into that and then you can actually plug it into a usb regular one so anyway i've got some of them i've got some um an, uh, another couple of leads coming um that sort of just uh, <laughs> how many needs do you need but yeah so but i will still obviously need these because um yeah so in my uh so at the back of the motor home with the like usb styly chargers that we use on our power rail i'll need to like plug into them so I need plenty of these <laughs> so anyway that's that little dilemma so it was just it was just um them little crazy things that um you know you you might sort of overlook if you think about char changing your phone and charging your phone in your house your motor and your car um have you come across it already <laughs> so uh, yeah so basically um they're quite a handy little thing i'm quite happy with them um obviously um yeah on these power banks and stuff now they've got the little new style usb c um so you can charge off that not a problem um without an adapter still <laughs> so you just cannot have enough of these leads adapters and whatever to keep yourself in touch with the outside world um so that's that little bit that i was going to show you guys in the meantime also um everything's going on in the motor room today i've got all sorts going on um i'm getting a, a few of them little tiny jobs done in amongst a couple of France passion maps as well um, but um, so what is next the next little thing I'm going to show you guys is this yeah, this is the uh, little um, screen that I randomly sort of put in just before we went off on the trip um, so anyway if you remember I managed to sort of get it in a position up on the dash yeah so the angle I kind of like had it on was a little bit of an incline so I'm just trying to get it in a better mounted position where it's going to try and show more of the actual road for the forward facing camera so that's what i'm just trying to do at the moment so there it, there's the plate that i've uh, taken off the base of the unit and uh, where i peeled off this um like gluey whether well, the plastic and and placed it on all this like it's proper like chewing glum style but anyway it's come off the dash quite nicely you can see it's coming off in proper big like lumps but you just gotta try and so i was it yeah didn't know whether i was going to use it again but in the meantime i'm just going to remove all this and go for another option so i'm going to get all this off which will leave me oh if he can it's gummy like pff, real chewing gum style glue but it does it is peelable which is good and it hasn't like left a mess in fact it's left the plate really clean i've just been left with a big lump 
of this gum which I'm going to place over there. So anyway, what I'm thinking about using is some of this super heavy duty Velcro tape styly. So the name of the game is to mark this out. In fact, it is going to take a little tiny, little tiny trim. I'm just going to uh, mark this off. because this is really good stuff there we go and then we're just going to go for a little snip out on that we have got our Mo Hotel Adventures made in doing the bed in at the same time which we'll show you what made oh my god god and right that's that little section there so hopefully that is now going to fit on the base of that okay that'll uh, hang on for a minute and uh, stick on the plate now I'm thinking while I've got the other am I going to be better off to just stick that on there like that and then snip out the other side of that velcro or I can just snip around this white backing material like that to get a like a mirror copy there right I think I'm all set so now it's a case of peeling off the backing which you'll probably see in about three days okay we've made the we've made the break can I believe it whoa right okay this is majorly sticky right okay let's see if we can get that just about nice that's cool that's all right that's lovely just maybe a little trim on that edge that is how we want it so okay now all I've got to do is stick that on the base and then make right my new secret weapon but be careful <laughs> lovely Right, let's snick that away. Nasty knife. Okay, yeah, so previously the plate was kind of like on a, on a little bit of a slopey bit. I want to try and bring it on up, although there's like a flat piece there and it tapers off. So it's going to be a little bit of a compromise. Uh, anyway, yeah, so yeah, it's all... Uh, a bit of a learning curve but anyway this plate snaps onto the base of that unit and then I'm gonna just try and position that so it's kind of like a compromise between the screen being a little bit of an incline and the camera getting a good shot up up the, across the road for that forward-facing camera um, 
but um, I think the actual Velcro is probably going to compromise that little incline a little bit. So I think I'm going to go for it and see how it works out. Okay, so I'm going to peel this. I did previously get it going a little bit, but let's, let's see what happens. I'm just hoping it will just stick on nice. Right, let's peel that backing off. This is the real heavy duty stuff. And then I'm going to try and get it probably there. There is a screw, you can undo a little screw. That's right, I'm just thinking. <laughs> just thinking. <laughs> now the sun's come out. Let's, uh, oh, let's just. Oh, um, yeah, so I'm just. I'm just. The sun's come out. Um, come out. So I just shut them blinds off. It was like really bright. So just trying to get this in a in a really good position. That feels okay. Um, and I can always just adjust it slightly if, if necessary with the two little screws of the screen that adjust it. Yeah, so just I've just removed it. The plates fixed firmly on the top of the dash there and when this fits on um, you just get it in the slots and then lock it in position um, there is a little tiny bit of movement on that kind of plate but um, I've got some of the packaging that came with this unit and I think I'm gonna just try and um, get a little bit in between the plastic to try and eliminate because you know what it's like when you're going down the road if that's like shaking slightly just one little bit of plastic um, a little bit of uh, um, packing in between that plastic surface is just probably going to make it really steady and that's exactly how I want it it's done so I snipped off a little tiny piece off the end of this strip of the foam and I've just um, got it in position and then just tipped it back slightly and put it in the front and then just pushed it down and slid it off to one side and that has actually got it totally that's not going to vibrate that's how I wanted it that's going to be perfect so let's um, I'll just open the uh, open the blinds a minute and just see how that's looking on the screen that is looking good that's gonna look sorry about the angle that's looking better so I've just been sort of playing with the screws on the side as well uh, it actually well this actual unit comes with a little screwdriver as well look. so you can just uh, poke it in the side undo the screws and I've I've literally got it in the ver most vertical position now so um, that's brilliant for the forward-facing camera so um, I'm gonna have to see how it goes with obviously when you want to look at the screen from the driver's seat but um, that if I open the it's really bright with the sun at the moment but um yeah the, the screen is looking right forward now which is going to give us a really good view for the forward facing camera so the other little bit that i was itching to get my hands off on was the rear camera and i've been um it actually tells you in the book i wanted to sort of get a visual uh, idea of how long the lead was and i'm sort of been like measuring and then i'm sort of just reading in the book it's 8.5 meters of lead uh, the red wire is the lead that you um, put to your reverse lights if you just want it coming on to power up for the reverse but um, i'm quite happy 8.5 meters um yeah and uh there's that little camera so i'm just going to plug it in and uh, see what it looks like on the screen with that camera so there it is in the uh, position there's the camera you can see how clear it is it's really clear but um, what we're going to do now is the little jack we're going to go in the back of the unit and plug that one in it's on it is on Hang on, right, so all we've got to do now is go into the menu, and I think it's that one. So there's the rear camera, or you can do a split screen. You can have a forward and the rear camera. Let's just go onto the rear camera a minute, like that. And I'm telling you, right, let's get the camera up in the position. There's the camera, and I'll tell you what, the quality 
is fantastic. And not only that, it's still got the little plastic cover on the front of the screen. So if I peel that off, oh my goodness me, that is a game changer. That is a game changer. I'm just going to go on to, let's just, um, can you see my dashboard? Look at that. That is absolute quality. I'm going to, I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to look back up through the motor around with it. That's crystal. I think that needs to be on the back of my motor home. <laughs> um, haven't decided where yet, but it's going to be really, really handy for the rear camera because it's a lot clearer than the one that's uh, on there at the moment. Yeah, so I just went through the uh, memory card on the player and literally this is some of the footage that we recorded on the way back uh, when we left New Haven uh, that night on the 27th of the 1st. There it is, look. So this is 5.30, so it's got the time lapse in a way at the top, so you can see the road. Um, but like I say, I saw, I had a quick look at this earlier on, and I just sort of wanted that screen just to come up a little bit, so we'll have to uh, see what pans out. I reckon that's gonna be some reasonable footage there now. But um, it, it's great, and that's uh, rearmost camera as well. If I can get some rearmost footage as well, it's uh, going to be perfect. So I'm going to roll. I'm going to coil this camera wire up. Um, yeah, you can literally get loads of the footage that uh, when we were on the road. So there's some nice road footage. It's just going to be really handy for any little incidents on the road as well. Just sort of great for that insurance kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? If you get a, if you do get a problem, and uh, you've got exactly what happened on the camera, this is um, absolutely perfect. So happy with that. But I'm going to, I'm going to come back to this camera. Um, but it's definitely give me the incentive to work something out with the rearmost camera. I'm just going to have a little bit of thought with that and uh, just sort of um, see what position um, I want to like have it in. Um, but um, yeah, we'll come back to that and uh, see what maps out. It's going to be taking the cable out of the vehicle. It's not going to be a problem from here back through. It's just going to be the position. I'm just going to um, wait to a better day and then uh, I'm going to have a little bit more thought. Where, where, have you got one? What, what position do you have yours in? I was even, I was even thinking about that drain thing for the, um, the, the, the water outlet, so I get right above the drain, but it's, it's too good a camera for that. It's, it's almost better off to be out on your wing mirror, or it's, it's gonna be like a, um, a wing mirror camera, so you can see exactly what's, you know, a little bit more vision on the side, or that rearmost camera down on the ground level. I think that's gonna be uh, the, the, the way I'm gonna go with it, I think. Um, so we'll see what pans out with that. I'm going to put it back in the box for a minute and it's ongoing, this little project. But uh, we're getting there. I'm uh, really happy with the position now. It's in a better position up on the dash. Um, vibration free with a bit of luck. Forward facing. Great. I was just actually uh, watching the bit uh, where we left the app actually in the car, camper car park. How good is that? Excellent. There we go, we're coming up to the barrier to get out. Fantastic, look at that. So I'm running it at the moment, I haven't actually got my ignition on, but uh, I've got the little uh, little power bank down here, so that's how I'm actually running it at the moment. So uh, it's uh, so neat, look at that. We've got the barrier going up. We have got the barrier going up. We have got departing Dieppe. There he is. So he's just paid. That's great. Loving it. Absolutely. 
Right, that's enough of uh, dash cam footage, I think, today. So just finishing off on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> it's a hectic afternoon for me. Uh, just one question that I had uh, approximately six days ago now. And the question was, uh, best France passion stops for Brittany Normandy Joff going for two weeks May and early June. Okay, so look, mate, basically, look. <laughs> there is the France Passion map. It is a monster map with endless amounts of farmers, um, farms, <laughs> vineyards, cideries. Around this area, there is like cider farms. In England, we have cider farms. In Britain, they have cider farms. And it is just immense. Just get the map out like that. And then just um, what I would do. So just for the Brittany area alone, uh, right out to Finisterre on this region. And you've got Morbihan. I can totally, Morbihan, the Gulf of Morbihan. Morbihan is a spectacular area. Uh, it is stunning down there. It is one of our favourite little, and we need to get back down. Lorient, Vans, all this kind of area down around here it is stunning. We've already sort of done it. I did a, did a little video a little while ago on that kind of area. Not as a documentation of visiting it, but um, just some of the camper parks and stuff down that area. But out around this area, and then what you literally do, Finisterre, for example, page 200. 144. So I would be flipping over to there, lot. And then where is the first one that I see? It is this one, a cider farm. Look, and uh, this is literally with the book. You can then just take your pick on the ones you want to, and and just literally go back. More cider farms in Brittany. Um, endless amounts uh, back to the main map. You know, if you're coming down from the Normandy area, um, it de all depends which area you go into. I personally head south. <laughs> I t tend to get south. Uh, the last time we were in Normandy, we ended up down around um, Ile de Ray, um, around La Rochelle area. It's a stunning area. The, the better weather is definitely down here. But, um, but hopefully, fingers crossed, by that time of the year, um, it could be sweltering down around Mor Morbihan, who knows, and um, yeah, you have literally, Morbihan, right, 464, let's go on to the next, so I've got my little marker, 464, okay, let's get into Morbihan. Morbihan, okay, again, look at the amount there is pages farms um, host families a lot of these families are like just want to host you so they want to talk to you and learn the language another maybe uh, eggs available cheeses um, so I'm getting down the Mosul now, so, but basically Morbihan, a beautiful, stunning area, and um, it's just, like I say, that's what you need to do, is just get your France Passion book, and uh, have a little rummage around, same when you get into Normandy, look at the amount in the Normandy area, um, we have minimal, we have minimised, like, using this, since we found the camping car park, app and we've been using all them places um, and there is just so much variation in France um, look at it it is um, from the Calvados region around here you know this Bayern there are just loads of little dots all around this kind of area it's just endless amounts of places where you can stop over and nine times out of ten you can guarantee um, you will probably be in some area of like interest interesting stuff going on meeting interesting people it's all in here
So, I, can I put my Franz Passion book away? Um, even I'm getting excited about it. I need to, uh, maybe a little uh, mini trip around Morbihan again. Oh my God, and, and, and that weather, I'm just thinking that weather and the coast. And um, yeah, it won't be long, it won't be long. It won't be long, as well as Italy. But uh, hey, hey guys, um, so my Mo Hotel Adventures made has been in today and making up our spring collection beds. Let's have a look. Oh, look at this. Look at these. Oh, this bedding is the original bedding that we had when we first had the motor home. This was the design. It is absolutely fantastic. It's taken me back there. Absolutely. Look at that. What a stunning collection. And one last little story before I disappear. So we had the rug in the middle. We had the rug. And I don't know if, if anybody has uh, sort of followed us. Um, we, had, we, we normally have the white rug in there for winter trips. And then we ended up with another rug that was a bit more of a, like a bearskin styly. But anyway, Caroline um, was going for a bit of a wash on both rugs. And they both went in together and it was all over. They are destroyed. <laughs> yeah, they got kind of like tangled together. She rang me up. Um, I was at work and she's like, you'll never guess what's happened. I'm like, S I've just tried to untang. They're both trashed. And I'm like, they both had a reasonable life. The white ones had a really good life. The other one didn't have such a good life. Um, it didn't last so long. But that's what you get for sort of not buying um, really good quality it was not the best quality in the, on, on the planet so we are gonna have to make another visit to John Lewis because that's where the, where, where the white one came from and uh, so I think we're gonna have to um, invest invest because we we sort of you, you just can't live without it <laughs> it's just one of them things you have there and uh, we can't live without it so we need to go and get another rug so uh, that is another job we got to do but in the meantime we're just chilling out getting a few jobs done um, mid-February now so um, things are looking a bit brighter but it looked it, it sort of came out a little bit brighter today the days are getting slightly longer now so um, we've got a little bit of um, a, um, daycare next week um, with some uh, small people and uh, maybe into next weekend as well uh, so I think we uh, may have a tied up weekend next weekend and then we could be back out on the open road so uh, we're looking forward to getting out there and I'm looking forward to the dash cam um, new bed in all going on um, so thanks for watching the video guys I'm going to be back on making a few of these um, uh, document stylies on the positions in Spain and Portugal that we stayed at just to uh, shorten them down a little bit so we'll catch you very soon on the next video thanks for watching guys